huge cheer from this MCG crowd as the Australian captain, Stephen Waugh, walks out for bat, which could be for the last time in this wonderful cricket ground. He's getting a standing ovation. I honestly thought I'd broken my arm because I couldn't form a, a fist at all and had this hematoma swell up straight away and I thought, that's the end of my career, basically, and I retired hurt. I don't think I'd only retired hurt maybe once before in Test cricket. The second ball that Steve Waugh faces got him on the arm. I'm not sure if he can grip his back. He's got a big, massive lump on his forearm. Well, it's obviously not what Steve Waugh wanted, nor the Australian public wanted, but I think it's the right thing. If he can't hang on to the bat, it would be absolutely ludicrous to stay out there. So I think he's doing the right thing by going off. Australia is still in a wonderful position at four for 373. The crowd are a bit, bit non-plussed as well. They're not sure what to do either. I remember going to get my x-rays with the physio, Errol Orcott, and waiting for the, um, the x-ray to come back. And I said, look, if it's broken, can I play the next test? He goes, no, you won't be able to play. And I thought, well, I might have just played my last minute of test cricket. I really thought I had broken my arm. And uh, it came back and it didn't show any fraction. I thought, well, you know, thankfully I can play the next test match. But I did have a lot of work to do because my whole arm had swelled up to twice the size with the blood and even before the test match I could hardly you know, grip the bat so it was, um, you know, those things come up in test match cricket, that's what it's all about, you've got to overcome it but yeah I really thought um, my test match career had ended one game short. Well the pressure here is building on all of us, here he comes for the last time as captain of Australia. Patel, who may or may not have been born when you played your first test, decided yeah, he'd yeah, yeah. give you a bit of lip. Well, I think it's something like, let's play, see you play one of those famous slog sweeps and miss one or something, you know, so I just said, mate, show a bit of respect. I said, you're in your nappies when I played my first test match, and they got a bit of a laugh from, I think, Vives Slaxman and the other blacks thought it was pretty funny, so that sort of relaxed me in a way. It comes hard at the ball early on, there's a silly point, there's two short legs, Kumbai. Well, catch all, oh, he tries to drive through cover with the bottom edge. He's off the mark with four. It's sort of relaxing too in the last test match because you think, you know, the scrutiny's sort of off now. You know, I've made that decision, this is my last test match, I don't have too much to prove. Um, you sort of, the weight is off your shoulders a bit. Having said that, we had to, the, the series was still on the line, so there was a lot to play for. India with the chance of breaking a big hoodoo that never won in a test series in Australia. Steve Waugh's last test. Will they chase after the tea break with Kadic and Gilchrist to come, the left-handers? It's going to be interesting watching. There's still plenty of cricket left to play today. In the back of my minds, we were still playing for a win. I think, um, I think the greatest accolade we could get from that last day was that Saurav Ganguly started to put his fields back on the fence. He, he was starting to panic a bit. Swings it away. It's a cut shot. Even with the three men there, Waugh finds a way to hit a boundary. And for us to think that we had a chance to win a test match after India declared in both innings, and particularly 7 for 700, to think we had a chance of winning was pretty amazing. So there was a moment there in that afternoon session where we, so Cato and myself got together and said, you know, let's see where we can take this. Neat stroke. And he hasn't bothered to uh, trot along at all. He's just sent Kaddish back to the other end. Steve Waugh on 49. He sweeps and brings it up with a boundary. 50 test match 50s for Steve Orr. Wife, fans, and all the crowd on their feet. He's done it beautifully. They've got themselves out of the danger of losing the match. Maybe there's just a little thought from Steve Orr. He's gone for it, and he's got it almost a long, long way. Four. having the 
dash now. And he's beaten the man at deep mid wicket. Chance in the outfield, and it's been taken. So Steve War is gone, but he's gone down trying to score a century. I saw one outside leaf stump and couldn't resist and played the sock sweep and top edged it out of the rough, proving that uh, after 168 tests, you can still do dumb things. So you're, you're almost relieved in some ways that the pressure is no longer going to be there. You're not playing Test match cricket, but you're also disappointed that you're not going to have that adrenaline rush and you're not going to walk out in the field playing for Australia again. But um, there was a lot of goodwill. A lot of people were, you know, wishing me well. I had the family there and friends, and, and a really great Sydney crowd. But I really feel privileged to have captained this side over the last four or five years. Uh, it certainly made my job easier to have such a talented bunch of players and, and the way the guys play the game, it, uh, it really has been an honour to captain this Australian side, so thanks very much guys again. And I think I've, I think I've said enough, it's time to get in the dressing room and have a few beers, but uh, once again, thanks very much for your support. Thank you.